your details, mate, and you can have the little 1455 because I want rid of that. So drop us your details, you can have that. Hyped up thing, the old Ford boys, you know, celebrating that the fact that every morning they dip the oil and they're like, guess what? It doesn't look like somebody's spaffed in my sump this morning. So two of my colleagues have chosen the 10 out of the list of the tractors that you sent in. I haven't even seen it yet, so I don't know what they've chosen. There'll be some on there that you think should be on there and I think should be on there, I dare say. But we'll have to just go with what's been chosen this time. You better make sure you've chosen 10 good ones. <laughs> well, well, then you sit here. Come on, then you sit here. All right, cheers. Let's have a look what we've got. You are... Can kidding me. You couldn't have chosen any others. Just, these are the first ten that came to mind, were they? Out of the list. I've seen I've seen I've seen what people put. Well I wouldn't have chosen this as a list. Well especially not that. You know yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're just on a wind-up. Okay, well I'm gonna have to go with this list. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rate them. Um so if they're a, just a, a decent tractor, a good, honest tractor, one that's very popular, you know, still collectible now, or even a modern tractor that people really like. Eh? See? What did I tell you? Eh? We're going to place that on here, this level, all right? And this will be the cat's whiskers, all right? Now, if it's a tractor that's, you know, set the benchmark for other tractors over the years. You know, this is legendary status, absolute legendary status. That's up here, and that's top dog status, all right? <laughs> then we've got the bottom shelf down here. In fact, right down on the floor, I'll put it. And that'll be classed as squirrel shit. It's a piece of junk. In fact, I'm gonna mark these up so we can all see what we're doing. <sighs> top dog there. Cat's whiskers there. That's the squirrel shit. Don't even need to do that one there. Right, we'll start off with the first one on the list. Is it? Yeah. <clears throat> They've got... Very nice too. They've gone out and we've bought various models as well, just to represent the tractors that we're looking at. Um, that must have been a bit of money. Well, yeah, of course it was. Us. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, obviously, yeah. Would be what I'm paying for it. Um, so we're going to kick off with the Massey 3080. Um, I think about 1986 to about 88, and then they went to 3085, I think. Um, but eventually that led on to things like the 3125, which, you know, man, they were something else. 95 horsepower, I think that's what they rated them at. But, you know, they're 100 horse because everybody just gave them that little bit of a on the old uh, pump. Yeah, they were a good, honest tractor back in the day. You think of the modern technology now you've got in your cab with your bloody screen and all that. Well, this is kind of where it sort of began uh, with Datatronic. And they basically, you had a little display in the on the pillar of the cab, which was uh, about, you know, equal to having like an Atari sort of game system in there. It's about as much use as well. You know, for the time, it was it was progress, but um, oh, Fud Weasel, he was a 3080 boy. Let me tell you, a good honest tractor, like I say. But I, I think I think as I said, I would class this as a top dog, 3125 maybe, but 3080 still a good honest tractor. I think we're going to put that be our first one, Cat's Whiskers. She's on the old Cat's Whiskers. I put her there. Um, well deserved position, I think. Massey 38, I'm going to rate that cat's whiskers. Good, honest, loyal tractor. Right, next one. Ah, right, okay. Shit. What's that one shrunk in the wash? It is, though, a um, John Deere 7530. Unfortunately for John Deere, the 7530 really, um, the early ones especially, uh, were like the Achilles heel with the head gasket. And uh, I know of several 75s that had head gasket issues. Later ones, obviously, they ironed them out and sorted it out. But yeah, the early ones, I think they would just try to push too much out of it. I mean, there are some who would probably class this as a vintage tractor. I, I don't go with the whole, you know, the, this whole thing that people are going, oh, they're losing their heads about them. 
I've got over 75 30, really. So I am going to rate this. I'm not going to diss it too much, but I'm going to rate this. I'm going to put it up here. Cat's whiskers, like I said, they did iron them out. They, they did get them right, but the earlier ones, not a happy chappy. Thank you. Is this out of my private collection? It, it is, is that right? Fen, 615 LSA. All right, with the old Turbomatic uh, transmission. Everyone these days keeps going on about Fen and uh, how amazing they are and this, that and the other. But the real jewel in the crown with these was the engine. And that is what built Fen's reputation. The 615, the 612, 611, the MWM engine. They had this MWM, which is the same engine as in like the old Renaults, you know, 145 uh, 14s and like the 155 54s, things like that. Squirrel! Probably one of the best engines ever to have been put into an agricultural machine, into a tractor. This, as I said, is what built Fent's reputation. The reputation that they're still, uh, you know, selling machines from today. Without doubt, this is gonna be our first top dog. This is gonna go up here. This is a tractor, as I said, that, that sets standards, all right? That Fent, Turbomatic, with an MWM engine, that is definitely a top dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're just on a wind up. Uh, you Ford 7810 and you you chose that didn't you picked out but you did I'll tell you now they haven't put right just so you know so there's no fucking disappointment like, you haven't put 8210 yet several people put it on the list because I fucking saw it but you didn't put that but you put the 78 well it, you better not have gone and but you have gone and bought a fucking how much was that Right, so look, let's let's just get this out of the way once and for all, all right? Because this whole seven, eight, ten thing, right? Now, everyone goes on about the seven, eight, ten, right? Being such a, an amazing tractor. Oh, it was legendary. It's a, an incredible tractor. The the only reason that people go on about the seven, eight, ten being amazing is because it's the only one in the Ford lineup that didn't shit its guts and go porous. How do you class that as being legendary? That's like having a dog and coming in in the morning and go, oh, he's such a good boy. He didn't shit in my slippers last night. I mean, he pissed in my cereal bowl, but he didn't shit in my slippers. He's such a good boy. How is that good? Bingo. I mean, there'll be people out there be sort of saying, oh yeah, I, I loved my seven, I drove a I drove seven, eight. I've even got a in seven eight the fact that people you know clap their hands and do cartwheels celebrating the fact that it didn't shit its guts i mean i just can't understand that i mean you'd expect a tractor not to do that really wouldn't you, if you were buying one uh, some of the early ones did anyway and sometimes it may be good sometimes it may be shit but i mean yes the later ones were a lot better they stopped a lot of that uh you know the cavitation and gone porous you know the blocks gone porous but anyway this was this wasn't even a ford uh design it was south sussex motors um, basically they got and the engine out of a 7, 9, 10 um, and made it up to like a 7, 6, 10 chassis and, and there you go. I mean, overall, you know, this is the thing. I haven't got a problem with the 7, 8, 10. It's the hysteria and overhyped bloody legendary status it gets when it's just because it behaved itself like every other normal tractor on the market, apart from Ford's, you know, everybody does bloody backflips and cartwheels and, and as for the, the silver ones the jubilee ones like we've got here and i've driven one of these on several occasions a silver one uh, which it's exactly the same as the blue one but it's silver and these days everybody wants the silver one and when they brought these out right they couldn't get rid of them no bugger wanted them because they loaded them up with the air con like you know three spools four spools whatever they were fully loaded and they were too expensive. Nobody wanted, and nobody liked the silver. So they actually painted a lot of them. The dealers painted them blue to match the normal, which people then bought. They couldn't get rid of them. And because they were so expensive, they then did the next run of them, they did with low spec, no air con, two spools. Crap. And, right, 
when compared to the 8210, which isn't on the list, thank you. They weren't as comfortable on the road, whatever. I know people say, oh, we had loads of power. We turbo ours. Well, whatever. Because that's going to be better if you put a turbo on something like that. And the people did, and they got a lot of power out of these. But this whole Silver Jubilee thing, 25 years. 25 years of Ford's gone fucking porous. They were a good tractor. They just do not deserve this legendary status. But this hype has just built up over years, especially you know, with the old Ford boys that ran all the previous models to these, you know. And they were like just celebrating the fact, I've got a 7, 8, 10. And when I dipped my oil this morning, it didn't look like someone had spaffed in my sump overnight. That aside, they were a good tractor. <laughs> and the best things about them, that Super Q cab on any Ford. You know, even when you go porous and you're sat at the end of the headland with all steam coming out of your breather and whatever, and just it's just not a good time. But if you had somewhere nice to sit, the Super Q cabs that Ford had back in the day, there was just something so so good about them. They were just like putting on a, a comfortable coat or a nice pair of shoes or whatever. It was just a nice place to be. That Super Q cab on its own should have top dog status. That cab is one of the best cabs ever. 7, 8, 10. It did turn around Ford's reputation and fortunes. I'll tell you that now. I won't say it saved them, but it saved their reputation. Uh, it really did. So for that alone, and the Super Q cab. I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna put it up here. Right. For the time being, that can just go up there. Well, Would you look at that? Yeah, as soon as we finish filming, you can you can take that down. So next we've got the little old Gray Ferguson T20. Do you want it? That's nice. Yeah, like that. Right. Here's a little T20 um, Ferguson, a little model of a little early one. Now I got, have I got a T, T, F, T, I've got a T, F, you get a T, D and T, whatever, right? But listen, um, like so many people pointed out, this, this little thing, you know, it, it transformed farming. It took it to the next level and you know people go on about the ferguson system this that and the other and the three-point linkage but just these were a milestone i don't think there's any doubt whatsoever where this is gonna go i mean it has to go you might just might not gut one off but this 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 has to go up here without a doubt absolutely without without a doubt <laughs> case international uh 1455 Oh, would it go in the wash to it and shrink? Um, that's quite cute, actually. I've got, yeah, <laughs> I like that. Uh, a little 1455. The only thing, like I said, any of these XLs. Now, and I'm a lover of the old, uh, like the 885s, 956s, 1056s, and all that, obviously. But that cab, nice enough to sit in, right? Nice enough to sit in, but just, you know, the steering wheel is at such an awkward position. Um, and they had a nice seat in them, so you were sort of almost being encouraged to sort of relax and sit back, but you couldn't, you were sort of had to be hunched over. The... I just, that always threw me. I mean, I loved the, 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 the control levers, the, you know, the gear sticks as well. That was all good, but it was just, I don't know, it just took the edge off of those XL cabs um, for me, just the, the seat and position. Actually, all right with like a little 885, because you were sort of up and you know, forward with them, but the bigger ones, it was just always like, couldn't you have just made that tilt or something a little bit? But anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am gonna actually, I'm gonna put it up there. I'm gonna put it up there. Um, we'll put it up here, look. I think it deserves it. I think it deserves it. As I said, it's, it's, but I'm happy with that. You know, we can always revisit this and, and change your minds. And I don't know what you lot think, but a lot of you did think it was a, you know, a, a sort of top dog tractor, so uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I wouldn't argue with that. <laughs> right, so the next one is the Fent 828. Okay, thank you, cheers. Modern day Fent, 280 horsepower. Um, yeah, I mean, again, they, uh, they built a reputation really 
uh, on those early ones, those ones from the 80s, uh, like the 615s and 611s and whatever. I wouldn't say, you know, having driven a few of these now and also friends of mine that have got these and have had issues, I wouldn't say it's their finest hour. Oh, oh shit. When they're going, they are amazing. Uh, engines have let them down in the past. Um, but to be fair, overall from what I've always heard, they've, yeah, they've gone wrong, but they have been, you know, swapped out or put right, whatever it's taken, you know, and they have done it. But when you start looking into the ones that are fitted with, you know, the Vario grip system, that's where it just takes things again to another level. If you don't know what Vario grip is, it is, you know, central tire inflation, but it is also then linked with the tractor itself, with the brain of the tractor. So as it senses that it needs grip, it will alter it, you know, as it's losing grip and traction. It will sense where it needs to put more pressure or less pressure or whatever. It is an incredible system. If you want to know about more basic central tire inflation and how it makes such a big difference in modern farming, go and watch my video that I did. And I'll put a link to that in the description box uh, below this video. Because of the issues that they've had and people I know have had them, again, this is on personal experience, but you know, I wouldn't say it was down there, but I wouldn't even say that was there. However, when they're running right, and when they're combined with that Vario grip, Fent 828, it's the cat's whiskers. When they're working, they're a good, honest, loyal tractor. So I think, yeah, it's, it's good. I think she's safe there. So moving on, we've got next the John Deere 3650. Um, thank you. Oh, that's my, yeah, it's off my collection, off my shelf. Thank you very much. 3650, I'm not gonna take out the box because I'm gonna put it back where it belongs. Great tractor, um, like the 33s, the 30s, whatever, but the biggest in that range, 3650, they were turboed, um, you know, from the factory. Uh, earlier ones, obviously 30K, later ones 40K. They then obviously did the wide step model as well, you know, big sort of standard steer lift handrail for the, um, you know, infirm. What's that smell? Never mind what that smell is. Just get me down. But they had the digital dash, again, a very simple early digital dash in the later ones, but um, the first ones, analog, you know, um, the steps up the side, stand on the battery and all that, just like this one. Brilliant tractor. You know, you get some people that don't drive deers or haven't driven them and they'll sort of, oh, that OSG2 cab, God, there's no room in there. Was it, what do you need? Somebody else in there to help you fucking drive? There's more than enough room for the person that needed to be in there. And um, yeah, they were, they were a great tractor in the day and still are. And again, they command massive uh, premiums when they come up for sale and they're in good condition. I'm split with this and I love them. Don't get me wrong, absolutely love the 50 series. If Ford had that at the time and everybody rates them and raves about them so much, this was actually a nicer tractor in uh, that was a lot smoother, a lot smoother engine, um, the old Gallop and Goat. And uh, I don't know, does it go up there? Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> You are on a wind-up today, aren't you? You're definitely on a wind-up. Thank you. Another one out of the collection. Yeah, very good. Um, right. Now, I'm not going to take this one out of the box, and I'll show you why in a minute. TW25, all right? Um, it is the Q-Cab version, it's, so it's the earlier version. Like George's, a lot of you recognize this, the same as old Silly Bollocks has got. Um, so they were about 154 horse, that's what I rated out at the time. Um, and then the bigger one, the intercooled version, was the TW35. A lot of these obviously suffered from porous blocks, especially the later ones. But um, look, in their day, they were a very, very sought after tractor. And in fact, they were so sought after that Ford couldn't keep up production. They just couldn't get the units out there for the demand that was there in the days in the sort of like early to mid 80s. And that was actually the first big opening for John Deere to really get a foothold in the market because 
John Deere was the only other real offering at the time that offered the range of tractors um, and that could compete, you know, uh, with with the stuff that Ford had. And um, I know a couple of people that have told me, you know, they, that's when they went John Deere. It was 84, 85. They couldn't get the Ford that they actually wanted. So they went down the John Deere route. Ford TW25. Now, um, we know about Silly Bollocks as one. It's probably one of the most famous TW25s on YouTube. And I had a uh, Series 2, the Super Q cab. I had a TW25 and I had that for, for several years. And yeah, it was all right. Again, it was a big, cumbersome old thing. It wasn't the great, because you've got the turbocharger is just sort of out in the front of the cab there. That's where that's positioned. So that's heat is coming through there. The air con weren't the best. And the back ends on them used to get so hot when you were plowing that you were just like uh, in the middle of these two heat sources, like a rotisserie chicken. I'm afraid to look at my ass, you know? I'm gonna have those griddle marks on my ass. Are they overrated as in people's, you know, um, desire for them and whatever? Yes, I think they are. And like we always laugh about, you know, everyone, oh, I'd love a TW. Have you driven one? And a lot of the time the answer is no. And that's why you'd like to drive one. Try driving one, you know, season after season after season. It, it's, you know, it wears thin. But it's that nostalgia thing. And what price can you put on nostalgia? It's the tractor that, you know, we saw growing up or it's the tractor that you remember your dad having or whatever, you know. Nostalgia costs. And the reason, as I said, that I, I'm not going to take this out of the box is because this is one of the ones we had several years ago when we did a, a charity auction and we sold a lot of toys off. People were putting bids in. Some helmet uh, thought he would, you know, put loads of bids in and he won it. And then I think he then realized that he actually needed the, the money for a, a, like a penis pump or something, but he never actually came up with the money. Wankers, fucking embarrassing. So we just hung on to it. But it's actually signed on the back by myself, George Saunders and you know, so say we hung on to it and, you know, maybe one day we'll put it back up for auction. I mean, it, it was, as I said, the, the actual people that were, were bidding, were bidding high for it, very high for it, but it's probably worth more now, you know, you know. I need about 350. I don't think there's much uh, doubt where this is going to go, simply because, you know, there's such a big outpour and a love for the old 25, especially when old Silly Bollocks takes his out. <laughs> People always like to see that. So there we go. Got to be a top dog just because of the reputation of, you know, people want to see it. <laughs> now to our final one on this list. Oh, thank you. We just kept it in the box. Okay, fair enough. So there we are. There's a little 135. Um, that's a nice little model. I like that. It's very nice. Well, look, little 135. I mean, they were about 45 horsepower. I'd imagine if you've worked on a farm at any point in your life, you've probably driven a 135. I can remember spending a summer on a farm with, when I left school actually, and they had two of them. One was a flexi cab, I think one was a normal cab. One had a loader. And I spent the summer loading straw onto trailers and then having to get up and then restack them because that's just how it was back then. And the heat, and I remember, you know, t-shirt and shorts, but it was just sweltering, you know, during the summer. And you, every time you're driving around, you've got all this sort of old barley dust and dirt drawing up around the cab. And because you're sweating and whatever, and you're, you know, down on the clutch, up on the clutch, change gear, reverse, back into forward, back, you know, down the brake, revert, check, check the alert. And old legs were going up and down, up and down. And my God, chafing down there. It was just red raw. And then you get all that dust stick to it. My little cobblers, they were like two little glowing beacons. <laughs> now that's probably one of the reasons I'm not a massive fan of the 135, as in I, I've got no desire to own one. I've driven one enough that I don't want to see one again, you know, to drive. My cobblers certainly don't. You know, some things do stick with you. So they would actually stick and, and that's half the trouble. Listen, 
135. Um, that they, they've they been the cornerstone of so many farms. You know, a lot of the time it was progression from that little grey Fergie, then the little old 35, you know, the Massey 35, 35X with the multi-power, and then the 135. And I mean, yeah, I'm not going to be one, like I said, to deny their place. 135, you know, back in the day, absolute little workhorse. But uh, they are 135. Definitely, definitely a little top dog tractor. <laughs> so there we go, muckers. Um, that's how I've rated these. You may think different, but then again, you're not on here, are you? So I am, and I'm the one that was asked to rate them. So that's how I've done it. But we've had nothing down on the old uh, squirrel shit shelf uh, this time. And if your tractor hasn't appeared, your um, your option of what you think should have been as a, a top dog tractor or, you know, or at least a catch whiskers tractor uh, and that wasn't chosen this time, blame them. But I could blame you for several that weren't on there and should have been on and some that shouldn't have even been on there. But anyway, I digress. So, um, if you think there's another tractor and you may have already put it, well, put it again. Make sure they see it. Put it down in the old squid pit below in the comment section. What tractor do you think deserves to be on the old top dog shelf or at least the cat's whiskers? What was a good tractor? Whether you've used one, whether you knew someone or you just like them. Uh, as I said, there's a load there. Even if yours has appeared, you can have another go and put something else. Is that still, you still got it up there? I said take it down. Because I don't want it up there. I don't want it up there. It's, it shouldn't be there. It's just get rid of it. Oh, get rid of it. Well, who, who actually chose, who chose the 7-8? You should have chosen. Well, there's several, but who did you use? You must have picked one of them out to use 7-8. Oh, so these are the where you got the list from. So the 7-8-10 was, they've picked out uh, Anthony Sandbrook. They've used you as the seven, you put seven, eight, ten, did you? Well, um, I don't want up there. No, Anthony Sandbrook, drop us a line on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever, get hold of me. Give me your um, give me your address and you can have this because I don't want it up there, basically. Um, we'll send it to you. If I'm gonna get rid of some more of these, actually. Um, I don't know, where do you get on there? You got uh, 7530, we got the 7530, didn't we? Where's that? That's here. 7530. Right, 7530, that was, can't read your writing, what? What's that say? Jo John Dingle. John Dingle, right, drop us a uh, Facebook or Instagram or email, whatever, and you can have, that'll send that off to you, 7530. And I'll get rid of, what I'll get rid of as well, for, was that little 1455? That's not actually just gonna end up getting ruined. Little 1455, that is, I, how, who taught you to write? So, what does it say? What? Ronnie Hoyle. How does that look like Ronnie? Ronnie Hoyle, send us your details, mate, and you, you can have the little 1455, because I want rid of that. Um, what else are we going to get rid of? I don't really want that up there, do I? Um, that's quite nice. I like this. Uh, Char yeah, Charlie... Charlie Morrison, Charlie Morrison, you said it mentioned a, uh, the little grey Fergie. So drop us your details, you can have that. Bob Tweed, Bob, drop us your email and you can have the, you can have the 135 because apparently you put 135. So Bob Tweed, drop us that. No, muckers, the other thing is the stickers. All right, uh, as I said, these are only available. They're not available in the shop. These are only available to those of you that comment on the videos. I've done three videos worth of comments. So there's nine of you that have won. If you wanna see if you're one of them, if you check in the description box below this video, right, um, you'll see the, the names of the winners of these. If you're one of the winners, Simply contact me, as I said, you got Instagram, Facebook, email, whatever. Just drop me your details and I'll put one of these in the post to you. And again, going back to those, if you want to do another one of these and, you know, choose different tractors because these have been done now, um, then just, you know, put it in the squid pit below in the comments section. What tractor do you think is, you know, the best tractor? 
your name will go in. Like I say, if you have commented and liked the video, like this video, press the like button, make sure you comment, and you'll go in the draw. And you might win one of these, because you ain't gonna buy them in the shop. All the other stickers are available in the Lord Muck shop at the moment. Um, and we're gonna have some new merch coming out very soon. We're just working on some designs and stuff, but the stickers are available. Ugh. Oh, a little speaking part today, is it? You want to see an 8U10. You're just as annoyed as I am, aren't you? Is that right? Yes, of course you do. Mm, yes, of course. So there we go, muckers. Like I said, something a bit different, but you lot wanted us to do it, so we've done it. What are you doing now? Um, but yeah, we can do another one in a few weeks' time. If you send your suggestions in, we'll have a look through them. There'll be some great stuff coming up soon from, again, Kubota. We're going to get on with that little Kubota. So everything is put back in place, all the fuel filter, and we've just got to put this uh, expansion tank back, and then drop the battery back in there. And we've got some big stuff coming in from Komatsu. So I've just filmed these muckers. Um, what a lineup, right from the minis, middies normal size excavators, dozers, shovels and dump trucks. Plus some Matador stuff. I'll keep you posted about that. I want to see if I can get, when this explodes, I want to get this on, on you know, video. What for the insurance company? Yes. You know where to find us? Instagram, Facebook and on here. Is that right, dog? Is it that time again? It is, isn't it? We've done so well today, haven't we? You're a top dog, aren't you? Well, I guess we're going the fuck on then. Marvellous. Anyway, Marcus, until the next one, do well.